All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Don Moore, who is in New York City. How are you doing, Don? Hi, John. How are you? Great. And Don is the Chief Executive Officer and President of Hybrid Theory North America. And what we want to talk about today, actually, uh, Don, is is ad tech. Uh, there's a it's a it's a phrase a lot of people hear now, but they're not 100 percent sure what that means. So maybe you start off by giving us a definition of ad tech. Ad tech is really the merger of digital technologies um, and algorithms and you know, the, 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 the list of acronyms goes on and on, AI in some cases, uh, with the digital marketing uh, universe and using the some of the best practices and talk technologies of that to create more efficient reach to consumers or, or to whoever the end target may be. Um, that is a top line explanation for extremely complicated fees. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because um, I mean, let's face it today, uh, obviously, like, you know, marketing, advertising technologies all all uh, kind of wound up together. And and it seems that uh, particularly like, you know, marketing and advertising technology and all that seems to be developing at, at, a, at a really high speed. And people, I think, are confused a little bit about you know, what I should use, where I should go, all of this. So um, how can you help? Uh, can you help bring some clarity to this? Well, I think I think that the, the, the biggest topic is the bargain made between uh, years ago, decades ago, actually, between you know, digital marketing or advertising and the consumer. I mean, it was mm -hmm. the original. The original bargain was I I. Um, you get all this amazing content for free and, and I get to advertise with you. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. over the year that bargain has, has been kept, but it's also been extended to, to, to almost an intrusive atmosphere. And I think a lot of us now in ad tech are, are trying to figure out how to create best experiences for the people we reach um, while maintaining a, an atmosphere of, of, of positive outcomes and co commercial outcomes for our clients. And that's really the topic today. It's about cookies. It's about um, uh, it, it, it's certainly about cookies in in in, in Europe and, and and also with here with some of the restrictions of particular states and particular California have put on. Uh, it it is um, a topic du jour. How can create best experiences for consumers with, um, but also serve our our clients as well. So that's that's really what's going on right now. It's a big big topic that a lot of us we spend yeah. a lot of time and a lot of money on yeah yeah and i was going to say i mean as as consumers at the other end um as you rightly say you know we're we're you know we get we're getting bombarded and inundated and we're worried about our our we're worried right. about our data we're worried we pick up something at our phone we're getting inundated with stuff we're now getting you know uh text messages you know uh that we didn't solicit and all of that. So how do you how do you put together something, as you said, I mean, the big challenge, how do you put together something that works for the company that wants to do the, you know, the advertising, but also works for the consumer, especially when the consumer is maybe a little bit more defensive than perhaps they once were? Yeah, that, that's really a, a, that's great. What, what we're really talking about here in, in many cases, and, and I'm glad you brought that up, was was really about the issue of privacy. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I'm curious as to, I, I'm going to a new meeting next week and I, I'm thinking about buying a new shirt. And the next thing you know, for the next three or four days, you know, shirt, <laughs> uh, advertisers follow you wherever you go. Uh, even when you're trying to read your more, your, your paper on your phone in the morning or something like that, or your news in the morning. So, um, I, I, and consumers are getting cut, uh, Consumers are getting a lot more savvy. The challenge for us is to create the kind of experiences that are mm -hmm. less reliant on a 300, you know, 300 by 250 or 728 by 90 banner across your telephone, across your uh, screen and, and, and become a little bit more respectful of the kind of information, the kind of creative that, that these consumers really want to want, want to have. 
um, you're right. I mean, if, if, if and, and not to mention some of the, the stuff that's going on right now in terms of just spam and uh, that it takes away from the, the art, the craft of what you're trying to. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I, I, I love what you just said there about takes away from the art and the craft of what you're trying to do, because I do feel like uh, somewhat the technology in this space has enabled people to, I wouldn't say be lazy, but maybe be lazy and take shortcuts rather than working, uh, as you say, on the creative side of it and really trying to create experiences um, for the consumer. So what would be examples when you say uh, creating a, a, a an experience that works for both sides? What, what does that look like? It looks, you know, there, there are ways to merge it too. I, I am, I'm a big fan of OTT or CTV because I think it merges the, the, the best parts of, of the creative um, mm -hmm. as along with the digital technology. Um, and you know, that, that is reckons back to what has worked most uh, for people creating relevant content for them uh, and, and getting that relevant content to the right eyes uh, at the right time, at the moment of relevance. And uh, so for us, along the different platforms that we have, we try to, you know, we try to, to duplicate that experience as much as possible. Um, but I, I do, I, 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 I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of, of using CTV and OTV, OTT mechanisms and platforms to, to make that happen. But I'm probably talking to myself a little out of business, but that's personal. <laughs> and so tell me also, what is it, what is the, um, as we know that the third party cookies, uh, issue is now, you know, that's, that's coming. What, what impact is that going to have? Well, you know, it's pushed off to 2024 now, so we hear. Uh, so it was 2022 and 2023, now it's 2024. I think it's got us all thinking and working about exactly what we, you and I have been talking about in the last few minutes about how to create those kind of positive experiences for our clients and our consumers. Um, I. I got to tell you right now that 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 majority of what we do, uh, whatever particular uh, preferences by the majority mm -hmm. of advertisers is is chosen or used or utilized, uh, it, it 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 will create a more positive experience than what we're doing right now. So mm -hmm. um, the timing, TBD. I I, I don't ex I don't expect consensus across these power players in, in, you know, between the, the major wall gardens of the power players. But I do expect you, what you're going to see is, is a growing sophistication um, in, in the terms of the creative and, and what our clients are, are demanding. So, but um, yeah. we, long way to go to 2024, so to speak. A lot can happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, ab absolutely. And so, um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's funny, like they love to make these big declarations and and then, uh, and then the practicalities of implementing them kick into gear, and suddenly it's not as uh, not as straightforward. A bit like we're here in California right now, where they're saying no more no more gas vehicles after 2035. And by the way, right now, don't charge your car at night because you might <laughs> just shut the grid down. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 can't, but I, I admire. But see, there is the yeah. threat of similarity. We we know that we know the end goal um, to be environmentally conscious and and mm -hmm. and and be the leader in climate change. We just haven't figured out how to get there yet. So, yeah. but we got a goal. And we're going to put it there, and we'll just work toward it. And there's there, it happens in business all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't have that. We'll, we'll fill in the specifics as we go, and we'll make mistakes yeah. as we go. But California's trying. We're trying uh, in our in our world as well. So, bravo to both of us. Bravo. Um, and then and the other thing. So uh, there, there seems to be right. There's there's large players in this in this space, right? Um, you know, when you think about like you know the Amazons and you know the Alphabet Group and all of that. And how much how much is the power so concentrated in these big you know companies that um, it's it's. Does this serve advertisers well, the fact that they have these big, you know, pretty big monopolies and they can drive up prices all the time? 
Oh, wow. Um, well, full disclosure, I'm a, I'm a Googler. I'm an ex-Googler. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, uh, I st- I, it's a great company. It was an amazing uh, seven or eight years I was there. I, I think, I, I don't remember, but uh, um, is it fair? There will always be companies like that in every industry, whether it's auto we were talking about or energy or electronics, whatever. But uh, uh, I, I think, um, is it fair? I, I don't know, but it is the natural order of business. And mm-hmm. we have the distant side, their wall gardens. I think what is uh, interesting, is, and I and I do believe my personal opinion, and inside we have a lot of debates about that. I think the um, the delay in the standards or cookie deprecation, you know, pronouncements is due to the lot that you got, you know, a few bullies standing in the playground mm-hmm. and nobody can figure out who's going to win. And um, I, I think Google delayed a little bit because. Uh, uh, they were they were expecting to dictate the tempo, and Amazon and Facebook uh, stood up and said, "Yeah, not so fast. We have our own ideas." And uh, uh, perhaps Apple stood. Up, we have our own ideas as well. Uh, so perhaps uh, uh, we'll see how the t- the Titans play out. Is it fair? But no. But it is it is the story of consolidation inside nascent industries. The only difference here in the digital marketing space is it's been on a super accelerated basis. You pick an industry through time in business, Mm -hmm. it always happens, the consolidation auto or steel, or you keep going back and back in time. It always happens. Here, you're talking not 100 years, you're talking, you know, 20. Uh, And in other industries, it'll be the same. Um, the, The acceleration is the only thing that feels uncommon um here mm-hmm. and so yeah yeah it, yeah. it, it is in order we have to exist in it it is frustrating at times especially when the same thing in the advertising industry yeah you, you have a certain five or six holding groups um that have a large share of the advertising pie um and the large resources to bring to bear uh it, it is it's titan upon titan in many in many cases yes Mm-hmm. And and the other thing that's interesting too is obviously uh, because because of the ability to be able to push out so many you know ads etc you know there people have had negative experiences you know with like fraudulent ads or ads that you right. know take you places where they don't so um, how how do how do companies like yours how do you ensure that you can uh, restore or maintain the trust that you have with the, with your consumers? Transparency. I mean, our company, Hyper Theory, mm-hmm. is very, very uh, committed to transparency with our advertisers. Um, and we use a number of, di- of partners and we use our own technologies to make sure that happens. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I take super seriously. That's why I've changed mm-hmm. my talk voice at that particular time. But um, <laughs> I, I think that transparency is key. To, to continue that trust and the bargain we made uh, with our clients. So, uh, I, you know, I can't get into the partnerships. And where sure, the partner- no, 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 of course. Of course. Start and where our own technology begins, but we take that extremely seriously. Um, mm-hmm. If anything else, it's exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. And here's here's another uh, question, right? And one, one of the challenges that uh, we have, not just in, in marketing, but in, in a, a lot of areas is we're able to gather so much data today, right? We've got so much data yeah. to, to the point where at some stage you got to say like, how much data is too much data? How much data is, yeah, it's nice. It's interesting, but it doesn't really do much. So um, I think p- going forward, don't you think we're going to have to start to be a little bit more um, targeted in the data that we gather and make sure that it's, it's stuff that really matters as opposed to just, Oh, let's grab, let's grab more data. More data is good. <laughs> who who will have to be more restrained about the data they get? Uh, um, I, I would say I would say more like focus on what is the important data. Like you know, for you know, companies even through advertising, what kind of data is really important to gather and which is extraneous? Because I think sometimes we just gather too much data, and that stops us making good decisions. Uh, well. I haven't seen that start to happen yet. <laughs> I'll be honest <laughs> with you. Um, you know, because it, 
the data that we gather, we get better and faster at making sure that data is relevant um, for some advertiser somewhere or for some client somewhere. So, um, no, I haven't, I haven't seen that. Uh, the, I, I think in many cases, I think consumers need to guard their privacy better um, because there are people out there that use data in, in manners that are um, unscrupulous at, at, at times. But uh, no, I haven't, I haven't seen that. The, the, it is a voracious appetite out there for data. A voracious mm-hmm. appetite out there. I think it's um, it, it 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 creates some interesting questions that we'll we will we will watch unfold as time goes on. But uh, mm-hmm. it does create some interesting questions. I don't know. I I, I in, in in my personal case, and I know a lot about this having worked at Google and other places mm-hmm. here at Hybrid Theory is. Um, in many cases, I've just I, I just give in to the fact that you want my data. You want I, I need my face ID to unlock my phone because I don't want to mm-hmm. remember passwords. I, I I have actually given in to the to the overwhelming nature of that um, uh, and move forward. So uh, we'll see. But I don't I don't I haven't seen anybody request less data than more. Right. Uh, <laughs> not, yeah, not, date, I, a lot of data junkies out there. Um, and then, so uh, in the last few minutes here, Don, uh, tell me, where do you think this industry is going? What does the future hold? Are there any interesting innovations coming down the pipe? Uh, you know, I, I, I am more pulled into the creative aspects these days mm-hmm. um, and, and, and seeing how the, the, we can capitalize on, on new experiences for our clients. I, I, I don't want to use the word meta, but I just meta. I just did, though. Uh, I think that <laughs> advertising is not necessarily connected to that company, but just the concept of immersive advertising or immersive uh, uh, experiences, which lead to more, uh, how shall I put it, uh, effective uh, connections with consumers. I, I'm just totally fascinated about what that will bring. Um, because it, it takes you almost out of the two dimensional into 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 environments where the limits are about creativity and tech, but more so about the creativity than the tech. The tech is waiting for the creativity to to mm. embrace it. I think um, I, I I think that there will be a greater concern uh, for privacy verbally. I whether that's executed well, I have my doubts. Because it's already out there, and mm. there's nothing you can do to take it back. I think there there will be an ineffectiveness for old ways, and it, and in the in the U.S., it very much depends upon the prevailing administration and power as to how much sway there is on privacy. Uh, in terms of, you mentioned scam and spam earlier mm. on, and and it very much depends on the administrations that are in in power, how effectively that's enforced. But again, I, I, I'm looking for more ex- immersive experiences other than the ones we have now. I think that'll be fun. I think that'll be awesome. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I come around. Yeah. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. I mean, that, that'll be a lot, a lot more interesting than just watching two dimensional stuff. And well, it'd be interesting to see, be interesting what, what, to see where it goes. It wouldn't, it, I, I saw a demo the other day. It was uh, for sports demo. And if, and you know, there's some hokiness to it too. But you know, you you felt like you were in a football stadium, and you you know you you look up, and there's the McDonald's sign over here, and you're know, like, okay, is this gonna work? I don't know, but it sure is cool, you know. Yeah, so yeah. I I want to hang out here a little longer, which may be the whole point of the whole thing. So who knows? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I wish they just do one where you know, if you buy seats at a game or a concert and everything, that you could see in advance exactly the seat and the view and all of that. I know they try stuff like that, but nobody's done that really well yet. <laughs> yeah, that would be, yeah, as opposed to, that's true. That's why I go to the, yeah. here in New York, when I go to Broadway, I go down to the box office. Still yeah. that old school way where I get a paper ticket and I can see the seating chart and know exactly where I am, <laughs> you know, and I have a preference on the left aisle, blah, blah, mm. blah. It still works for me. There's all this stuff yeah. to be super old school stuff. So uh, it still works. Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. Well, listen, Don, thank you very much. Uh, thank. Uh, before we go, all Don's information is going to be below this video, but please do tell people a little bit more about you and Hybrid Theory. Well, Hybrid Theory, uh, Hybrid Theory is a global company. Uh, we specialize in delivering uh, 
really digital campaigns powered by market intelligence. So gets to the things we talked about today and data and targeting and in the pro, especially in the programmatic sphere, uh, coupled with uh, high impact creative, um, which more than likely, I, and, and this sounds a little cliche, it serves all parts of the marketing funnel from the awareness to the performance. But um, and our clients are mostly um, really they're not necessarily the companies that that clients uh, or that that, that that can gravitate to the holding companies they are not the major global brands, but they're still powerful brands. Um, that are looking for the latest and greatest in tech mm-hmm. and effectiveness and co- client service, but can't necessarily afford uh, a major agency on board. So, so we, we, we service that need and we do it here in London and Singapore, um, New York, of course, U.S., total North American total. So, yeah, that's what we do. Okay. Fantastic. Well, I would encourage you to go check it out uh hybrid theory and um, thank you again don thank you for watching and listening i'll see I you think- all again soon all right thank you john thank you for having me